Good evening. Uh, I'd like to call to order the uh, Finance Committee meeting of January 11th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, first order of business is the approval of minutes. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the uh, draft minutes of December 14th, 2021? So moved. Moved by uh, Alder Wheeler. And uh, any discussion? Seeing none. Uh, those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, the ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, item three, public appearance is not agenda items. Do we have anybody registered in council or on Zoom? We do not. Moving on. Uh, item four, uh, that is finance director report, treasurer's report as of October 31st, 2021. I will turn it, the floor over to our treasurer, Misty Dodge. Thank you. Uh, so included in the packet tonight is the October treasurer's report. Uh, November treasurer's report I was hoping to have on this agenda as well. We ran into a bit of a snafu, so you'll see it at the next meeting instead. As of October, we had settled all of the tax collection stuff in September, and the new tax collection hadn't quite started yet for December, so you'll see this is a pretty standard month. A couple things to note, though, is uh, the we did purchase about $750,000 worth of new types of CDs through the WISC account that we have, which will be on there. The other nuance is as we are making these really large construction payments, especially on Fish Hatchery Road, which is reimbursed by debt, how that happens is we spend the money in one month, and then I transfer it from a separate bank account that I have with WISC to, to hold the bond proceeds back into the checking account the following month. So you'll see sometimes we'll have a negative cash flow. That's just because of the difference between when the check was cut to the vendor and when that money was actually transferred into the checking account to reimburse it. Um, so it's, there'll be that month delay there. Uh, and then actually for October and November, I transferred both of those months in December. Um, just due to prioritization of other projects. So that'll look a little bit different uh, that we have a bit of a small deficit there, but it's not anything that's uh, surprising or something to be worried about. So I do have the rest of the report, but I thought I'd pause quick to see if there's questions on the October report. Uh, now, is that the report itself? Yes. Yes. Uh, the only comment that I'd like to make is uh, just reviewing the uh, city of Fitchburg, excuse me, city of Fitchburg general fund, uh, at least as of the period of time that you sh reflect the, the total revenues versus the expenditures. Uh, I'd say we were in a very good position. Granted, there's two months out. Um, would you not agree with that? Yes, the only nuance to keep in mind is that we are primarily funded by property taxes, which I receive all at the beginning of the year, and then we spend it throughout the year. So we will have a pretty significant surplus at the beginning, and then we kind of spend it down throughout the time. But overall, I do expect there to be a surplus at the end of the year. Okay, very good. I guess that's what I was, from your experience, and based on the, the information provided from what I like to look at is the, the, the overall profit and loss. Yeah. I expect we'll have a surplus. Yep. All right. Very good. Thank you. Is there any additional questions? Yes. Gabriella, Alder mm -hmm. Gerhardt, you uh -huh. have the floor. So, Misty, I'm looking at page 14 of the packet, page 9 of the treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. um, it's the chart with all the revenues um, at the top and expenditures at the bottom. I was surprised by the licenses and permits that were so far above budget. Is that because we weigh on, we like, we reduced it because of the impacts of the pandemic or is it just because of net new construction is so wild? But I mean, it seems like we're way, way, way over what we expected. Yep, so we do budget conservatively. It's mostly building permits. We do budget conservatively in that account because we don't want, uh, say, you know, we're, we're at a very high construction level this year as well as last year in the last couple of years. But if the market drops, we don't want to have a big problem in our budget. So we budget for what the average would be over the last five years, not for what we actually think based on current construction levels. Um, so while it is a large uh, favorable variance, uh, it is expected, I guess, to an extent that way too, um, and is a, a good thing. Okay, just a, as a follow-up on that, so you, you don't base the the next year's budget off of a previous year. You, you do average 
out a five year. Yeah, we do more of kind of what an, uh, the lowest possible year would be. Okay. So we, we know that we'll have some building construction activity every year. We don't want to be hyper conservative. Sure. But we do want to be conservative so we don't build ourselves a hole that we have to deal with when everything else is also crashing at the same time. We don't want to have to deal with that too. Good. So it is a, a strategic conservative budgeting move. Good, thank you. Uh, additional questions from the committee? All right, moving on, moving on to the review of bills, which is item five, five A. Do you mind if I have, I have a little bit more in my report. If oh, okay. yes, no, I'm sorry. No okay. worries. Mm -hmm. A couple things I wanted to mention quick. So the ARPA presentation is tomorrow. We have that special committee of the whole meeting. Um, I did share that the final rules were released last week. Um, so uh, I guess the spoiler alert is that they are favorable to us. They made it a little bit more flexible than what it was originally. Um, so that was good news. Um, but I look forward to kind of starting that conversation with everybody tomorrow night. Uh, tax collection obviously has been a pretty big thing in our department the last few weeks. So I like statistics, so I assume everybody else does too. So as of <laughs> the end of the year, uh, we had about 27 million that we collected, and that would be in three weeks uh, that we collected 27 million. It's about 28.4% of the total amount of the entire tax roll. And it was a little over 4,000 transactions in those three weeks. Um, it was actually less than normal because uh, we were open on the 31st. We did have a pretty steady stream of people coming in, so I think that was good. But we didn't get the huge box of 1,200 individual escrow checks until the next day. So the percentages were a little bit lower than normal for by 1231 because that big box showed up the next day. So that if you look at through today, we've collected $41 million, which is about 43% and is pretty close to where we are always at this time of year and 6,332 6, transactions. So in four weeks, we've gotten a lot of transactions going through the office. So huge kudos to the team. Uh, also really wanna thank a couple other departments that really helped us get through this as well. Just really proud of the teamwork that uh, the city departments have. Other than that, end of year and audit is coming up on our heels next. And then you'll see a, quite a few resolutions from me in the next few months. We're working towards the TID-6 closure. You probably saw one referral tonight. There'll be two other resolutions you'll see from me soon. And then in the 2022 budget, we uh, plan to call some of the TID-4 debt. So you'll see a special direct referral resolution early February to, to execute that too. That's where we're prepaying outstanding debt in the TID because we have excess cash um, to basically get that off the books and save some interest money. Uh, so you'll have a lot of resolutions from me in the next couple months. That is it now. Okay, very good, thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to item five, rev review of bills. Uh, 5A, detailed review of checks for $10,000 and above for the period of December 1st through the 31st, 2021, totaling $2,432,987.34. Uh, questions from the committee? Uh, Alder Gerhardt, you have the floor. I'm um, looking at page 42 of the packet, page two of the report. Um, the Hooper Corporation charge for stainless steel countertops. Just curious if that's if that's the community center, if that's another building in town. Uh, it's definitely mm -hmm. in this building. If I remember correctly, it's down in the senior center, but I'd have to, okay. uh, Chad's giving me a nod. So yep, that's down in the senior center. Thanks. Uh, and I have one question f on the uh, page one, um, the uh, grading and excav excavating for $768,584.61. I mean, it's, that must relate to obviously, uh, just as it says in the description, of North Fish Hatchery Road. Uh, it's a huge dollar amount. Do we see more of these large dollar amounts coming in? Yes. Okay. Uh, so especially, I'd say this time of year, because they do a lot of work in the summer, and then uh, it takes about a month before the bills are actually submitted and paid. Um, so this would be for work uh, over the summer. And I think the check I approved recently was like over a million dollars as well. So there was a lot of work done on that project mm -hmm. over the last few months. Right. We all know that price tag. I'm just curious as to 
you know, where in the process this, this dollar amount fell, if it's the beginning, the end, you know, so. Yeah, it's overall, I want to say it was a $20 million project, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're nearing the end of it. I mean, the road's open, but there are some additional expenses that have to go through still. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, very good. Additional questions? Okay. All right, moving on to item uh, 5B, detailed review of all checks issued. Checks 122826 through 122925. December 1st through the 31st, 2021, totaling $2,573,708.01. Uh, questions from the committee? Yes, Alder Gerhardt. Thank you, I've got, I've got two questions. The first is on page 47 of the packet, um, page three of this report. Um, it's at the very bottom, the charter communications charge for investigative trap and trace. Is that a police department procedure or just curious what what that is? Yes, that's for the police department. Okay. Um, and then page 50, uh, which is of the packet, page six of the report, um, there's a fee for the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture and trade down towards the bottom. And it looks like there's a renewal for an employee that's no longer with the city. Is that just a, a typo or is that something from earlier in the year? Uh, it's not the employee you think it is. We have another employee with the same last name that's in the okay. police department. Got it. Okay, thanks. Yep. Uh, any additional questions? Okay, hearing none, moving on to item 5C. Detailed review of all ACH payments for $10,000 and above for the period of December 1st through the 31st, 2021, totaling $415,497.02. Questions from the committee? Seeing none, moving on to 5D, detailed review of all ACH payments for the period of December 1st through the 31st, 2021, totaling $433,220.93. Questions from the committee? Seeing none, moving on to action items. Action item 6A, we have a motion to approve resolution R-204-21, approving a joint funding agreement with the U.S. Geological Survey, which is the USGS for the USGS Swan Creek Monitoring Station. I move approval. Motion to approve made by Alder Gerhardt. Um, and you will speak to this, Misty? I can, and Alder Gerhardt can uh, jump into with RCC. I know they adopted this as well. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, uh, uh, I think it was last year through the budget process, it was approved to put in a monitoring station. And then this is the ongoing actual monitoring cost um, in order to use that infrastructure and monitor the, the area. Okay, is additional discussion? Alder Gerhardt, do you uh, want, want to add anything? Just want to say that um, you can actually see the live data at any time you want. If you just search USGS Swan Creek Monitoring Station, um, you can see data from today even, which is kind of fascinating. And then over the course, this has only been up for a little over a year at this point, I think. So it, it, there takes some time for it to build up a data set for there to be it to be usable, but um, it's pretty exciting. And then also Fact TV did a great video when the ribbon cutting happened. I feel like it was it was not this past summer, it was the summer before, but time is so confusing nowadays. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, Fact TV did a nice video and they actually show the inside of the, of the, the, of the actual um, monitoring station. If you're curious about it, it's, it's kind of cool to see what it actually looks like. So just a cool tidbit. Very good. Uh, additional questions? Discussion? Seeing none, uh, uh, I'll place the motion to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it, the motion carries. Moving on to uh, action item 6B. Uh, motion to approve resolution R-224-21, purchasing two Bobcat, Bobcat tool cats. I move approval. Uh, approval, motion to approve, made by Alder Wheeler and uh, Misty, will you? 
I will, and here Alder Wheeler can jump in if there's anything that I missed from Board of Public Works. Um, so this is a equipment purchase. There were two of them approved in the CIP, one that's a replacement and one that is a new item. Uh, we did have to do a little bit of jostling with the budget um, because of the steel surcharges, as you know, everything is going up, uh, steel in particular. So these pieces of equipment ended up being a lot more than what we originally thought. The good news, of course, is we think we'll be able to get more for the one we plan to sell as well. Um, so we'll delay one purchase until we get those sale proceeds, make sure we have enough money, and then purchase that additional attachment after that. So pretty standard approval. I'm guessing that surcharge is just that, a surcharge. I mean, it's not, a, if there is no steel issue, the surcharge uh, will not be applied? Uh, there is a steel surcharge. Regardless? So yep, yep. Okay. They've just, as a whole, they've just assigned that to all of their equipment. Okay, so that is part of the, uh, the expense. Yep. Additional questions? I guess I will say, if I could clarify, there is an additional amount of contingency in case the steel surcharges goes up even more, okay. um, but I'm hopeful that that's not going to be needed. Okay, very good. Alder Wheeler, anything to add? Nothing to add. Okay, all right. Uh, see no additional or hearing additional uh, uh, questions, we will place the uh, motion before us to uh, a vote. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The uh, motion carries. The ayes have it, the motion carries. Moving on to uh, action item 6C, a motion to approve resolution R-238-21, authorizing legal services in the defense of the High V Inc. excessive tax assessment lawsuit. I move approval. A motion to approve made by Alder Gerhardt. Uh, Misty, will you just? I will. Okay, the floor is yours. This may look a little familiar. Uh, Hy-Vee has uh, filed a claim against us for their assessed value for 2019 and 2020, uh, which we hired legal counsel for, uh, which you may have seen before, would have had a similar pre-approval. However, both of those years, they have now withdrawn that claim. Uh, so at least those are over. Um, however, they are contesting still the 2021 assessment value for Hy-Vee as well. Um, so would like to hire the same lawyer that helped us with the last one. Um, it's really her niche. So this is the area that she's really strong in um, and clearly did good work for us with the last one considering they were withdrawn. Um, but there, we do basically have to start over with the cost. A couple of nuances here. Uh, one, this property is in TID 6. Uh, so any costs that we incur for the legal um, to defend this claim from now until when that final audit happens, assuming we continue with this closure, will get picked up by TID 6. Uh, any costs that we incur after the closure uh, would get picked up by the insurance fund, of which we do have enough money in there to pay for this claim. And ultimately it comes down to it's important that we defend these claims um, because it, it holds value for the rest of the assessments. Very good, I'll open the... Uh Open the uh, floor up to questions. Questions from committee members. Okay, seeing none, I will place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it, motion carries. Uh, moving on to I action item 6D. The, uh, motion to approve resolution R-02-22 amending the 2022 building inspection fee schedule. This is a direct referral. I move approval. Uh, motion to approve made by Alder Wheeler and Misty. I believe you'll speak to this mo resolution as well. Absolutely. Uh, so as part of the 2022 budget adoption, the council approved the fee schedule. Uh, seemingly by oversight, the uh, plumbing minimum permit was kept at $100 and not $150, uh, similar to all of the other trades. So this is coming forward to you guys to update the fee schedule, make that fee consistent with the other trades. Very good. Questions from the committee? Seeing none, I'll place the uh, motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Yeah, the ayes have it, motion carries. Uh, moving on to the next action item, 6E, motion to approve resolution R-08-22, ratifying the 2022 through 2024 collective bargaining agreement with WPPA 
and this is a direct referral. Do I have a motion to approve? <laughs> I move approval. All right. Motion to approve made by um, Alder Gerhardt. And Misty, you'll speak to this one as well? I will. Okay. Uh, so this is the police union contract. Um, it would cover 22, 23, and 24. It has been ratified by the union back in December. I'm doing a direct referral now for you guys to be able to see it. Uh, there's a variety of different changes that are made. There's a red line version in the packet, so you can see what all of those changes are. But I'd say the key ones would be, uh, we changed the process and then increased the amount for shift differential, changed the process and increased the amount for clothing allowance. We added an additional step for when they hit seven years of experience with the city. We added a couple of vacation days for employees with 20 years of service or more. And then the across the board increases was 2% for 2022, 2% for 2023, and 3% for 2024. Um, so spent a lot of time with the bargaining team and the union uh, to negotiate this contract and feel like it's a fair contract for everybody. Very good, thank you. Questions, discussion from the uh, committee? Yes, Alder or Wheeler. Yeah, Ms. D, I just have a question. Uh, what's the difference between the limited term um, detective and the regular assignment? <laughs> so included in the I guess the contract is a follow-up assignment where a patrol officer could take that detective assignment on a relatively limited term. So it's 90 days to two years is kind of what's being tossed around as an amount. Chief would make that assignment, the process by which the employee would be assigned. Um, so they're not detectives. They are basically acting as a detective for that limited term time. Got it. Very good, additional questions? Discussion? Yes, Alder Gerhardt, you have the floor. I'm curious at who was on the bargaining committee? Yeah, so that is set by ordinance. So it's the finance committee chair, the personnel committee chair, uh, city administrator. We did have legal counsel, outside legal counsel there to assist us. Uh, then city attorney, myself, HR manager, and the mayor. And then the chief of whichever unit it is that we are bargaining with. Awesome, thanks. Did you? Finance chair, right? Pardon? You would be finance chair. Yes, right. correct. Mm -hmm. Additional questions? Okay, hearing none, I'll place the motion before us to a vote. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it, motion carries. Uh, moving on. Uh, to item seven, announcements, 7A. Our next meeting is January 25th, 2022. And then, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Alder uh, Wheeler made the motion. Uh, those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The uh, ayes have it, motion carries. We are adjourned at 6.53.